Hello, I'm Monica Price and welcome to Cuppa TV. Now, could you imagine a child having no presents to open on Christmas Day? For hundreds of children around the world, this is the case. But today, I'm joined by Adam Contere, National Manager for Operation Christmas Child, a charity that delivers Christmas presents in the form of shoeboxes, packed full of goodies to children across the world who otherwise would not have a present to open on Christmas Day. Also joining me today is Nina Baker, singer-songwriter who has recently won a MoGo Award for Best Up-and-Coming Artist, and she joins me today to talk to her about her new music video. This guest is a man that volunteers tirelessly for a charity that gives immense joy to children around the world. We welcome National Development Coordinator, volunteer Adam Cotteray from Operation Christmas Child. Thank you, Adam. Hi. Lovely to see you. Thank you. <laughs> well, uh, that's thank a you. long title, but let's just say you're a volunteer, <laughs> aren't you? Yes, I'm a volunteer. Um, an Operation Christmas Child is a project that you can participate in at any level. Yeah. So I can go through a bit of a journey. Yes, well, absolutely. So let's, let's go <laughs> yeah. all the way back. We've got some boxes on our table. Yes. We're going to be talking later on about that. Yeah. Adam, first of all, let's talk about you and okay. how you got involved. So right. you volunteer, which means you don't get paid a penny for what no. you do. No, I'm very fortunate. Is When I first volunteered, it was just on the basis where you make a shoebox, um, pack it with all the little bits and bobs, yes. and then drop it off so that it can then make its way to a child in need of a Christmas present. So that's how it started with me, and that's, that's how it stayed for a number of years. But then over the years, I got drawn more into it, um, simply because as a charity, it's very simple. A child normally, in a school or a church or, you know, someone's child, you know, when they're at work, they'll yes. take a box home. Yes. That child will do a Christmas present for another child. And all Operation Christmas Child does as an organisation is takes it from their hands and puts it in the other child's hands. So I love it because it's really that simple. A simple, simple. idea. Yeah. And it's a simple idea of just filling a shoebox. It is. Full of gifts yeah. that you can give to a child that otherwise perhaps would not have a present at all. Exactly. And <laughs> when you first started your journey... Yep. How, what did you do? How right. did this come about? Well, I was working, I just finished my studies and I got a temporary job at Hewlett Packard in Bristol and I saw a leaflet in the company. Yes. Of, here's one I didn't yes. prepare properly. Yes. <laughs> so one of these yes. was literally in a little rack. Yes. And I thought, that's a great idea. I'll do a box and then drop it in with their local person who collected them. So um, I think I did two. I, put, I did a boy and a girl, um, and I remember going to Tesco's and getting the shops, uh, the, the, the shopping and putting it all yes. in. But then I forgot about it for a long time, um, and it was because each year, in my mind, I was thinking, you know, I'd like to do a shoebox, but I never quite remember the dates, and yes. I'd always miss it. And so then my daughter's now six. When she was born, um, this, is a, this is the bit that really polarised me, is you get those videos on, um, in the gym, mm. actually, of donations they want you to donate to different causes yes. and I used to ignore them but since uh, my daughter was born I looked at those videos and I actually saw my daughter's face in those kids that were in real trouble mm. you know some were getting malaria some were starving um, and I kept seeing her face and I thought you know I've got to do something about this now because um, there's no difference they're the same mm. kids uh, mine's just lucky to have been growing up in an area in a, in, a, in a country where she's not going through that same hardship so I said, right, I'm going to do 100 boxes this year. Um, got together with some friends, we fundraised, we, um, we, 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 <laughs> we made a mistake of actually trying to wrap 100 yeah. shoe boxes. It doesn't sound like many, yeah. but to wrap yes. 100 in paper that that's you right. can open. Yes, that's right, yes. So, but the easiest bit was getting the things. I've, I'd forgotten how, um, how cheap things can be when you shop around. And so what we did is um, bought value products, um, value pens, um, pads, toothpaste. And literally within a couple of weeks, we had those 100 boxes. Mm. And that's when, um, from there, the next year I started thinking, right, how can we contribute more? And a lot of people will go down the route of volunteering in a warehouse, doing sorting and distributing, or going out to schools and promoting. Um, what seemed to happen to me is I started going on eBay <laughs> yeah. and I was finding more and more deals and I was putting them together with more and more people and the subsequent year we ended up doing a thousand. Wow. 
Wow. Yeah, and it scaled up, and each year yes. it scaled up. I got my work lorry, yes. I bannered it all up with pictures of shoeboxes. That became a bit of a joke because whenever I'd, I left the banner on all year yeah. round, <laughs> so you'd go in to do a pickup or a delivery, and they'd yes. say, Oh, you're a bit early, mate. You know, all the Christmas presents and stuff. Um, mm. And so, yeah, then finally um, I started volunteering in the organization where I, was, I, I want to try and help other people. There's only so much you can do on your own. Mm. Um, and it's really a team effort across the whole country. So it's gathering all those people. Yeah. Well, we've got a video, uh, Adam, <laughs> so let's have a look at the video. And what's okay. this video called that we're going to watch? Journey of a Shoebox. Journey of a Shoebox. That's for people who may have never heard of Operation yes. Christmas Child. Let's have a look at this and then people can understand okay. exactly what you do. Yeah. So Adam, that's a very moving video, yeah. isn't it? But also yes. very informative for people, as I say, who, you know, before we watch the video, people might yeah. not even know that Operation Christmas Child exists. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about <laughs> the charity itself. Right, it's uh, very simple. It started in 1990, and it started where there were people, kids were having a real bad time, a real rough time in Romania in particular. And a few individuals got together and they thought, we're going to do something about this. Um, they got together with businesses, churches, schools. Um, and around the Wrexham area, so not too far away, um, they got together 3,000 uh, Christmas gifts. And the form of a shoebox was the most convenient packaging form to put the gifts in. They then uh, hired a lorry and sent those 3,000 gifts to these children in Romania, and the job was done. You know, they did a great job. Those kids had a, a Christmas present, which was, it was the first time such an operation had occurred. 
but it didn't fizzle out. Next year, it was done again on a bigger scale, um, and then in the subsequent years, other countries were added. It became an organization um, that just kept growing year on. Um, and now it's an international organization that distributes um, about 10 million shoeboxes a year across the world mm -hmm. to 130 different countries. That's amazing. And what yeah. are some of the countries, Adam, that, where the boxes go to? Right. I mean, all sorts. I mean, th there's a list on the... All the information is at operationchristmaschild.tv. On the website. On the website. Um, but, you know, anywhere, Zimbabwe. I've been to Zimbabwe to see the shoeboxes being mm -hmm. distributed. Uh, Romania, Albania, Lithuania. You name it. Um, there's a lot of countries where there's some areas where children are almost forgotten when it comes to Christmas and it's such a simple gift and at this stage the, let me explain as well that the um, it's a Christian charity but the boxes are given on need alone so they go to all faiths countries and they go to the kids that are most at in need mm -hmm. and that's a process that happens in each country with their local teams and it's yeah. I mean it's a, and for many it's the first time the child has ever yeah. received a gift that's the thing that really shocked me and polarized me into um, further action is um, that when people were telling me stories from distributions where children are actually carefully unwrapping the wrapping paper around the box and putting it up as a poster um, just because things are that hard to come by. A toothbrush, they may have had one toothbrush in the family um, or none at all. Mm. And that's why these boxes, although it seems simple having a soap and a toothbrush and a toy, um, there are things that just bring that message of love and hope to those children that someone actually cares about them. So tell us about your personal journey, Adam. <laughs> How did you get involved? I mean, you said yeah. before, you know, we watched the video, but tell us a little bit more detail. What, what sort of, if you like, was a catalyst <laughs> what was a catalyst? for you to say, that's it, you gave up right. your full-time position? I did. Position. Um, I started doing it while I was working because of what happened with my daughter being born. And all, all the time I was very mindful of the fact that if an opportunity arose for me to do this full-time, I'd take it. Um, we did a, a thousand shoe boxes in a group of us and we actually had some printed and that's, that's what we had printed. And it was almost like the straw that broke the camel's back. I started thinking to myself, this is really hard work. Have I might made the right decision? And at that moment, I needed a sign. I needed something to say what to do. Uh, and I, I got a letter and that was in the mail. It just looks like a normal promotional poster, but that's my shoe box. That's one of the thousand that wow. came from the garage when we were volunteering. And you had no idea that that was no. going to be? So of the millions that were distributed around the world, that's the one that ended up on the... Um, that's incredible. Yeah. And that's the box there. And when you open it, some of the items will be very similar to what yes. that girl in Kenya received. So that then told me, I'm going to go for it. And so I managed to save up. I'm very fortunate. My wife works and she pays for things while I do this voluntary yes. work. Um, and so um, now the way I help the, the organization and charity is to go out and tell people about Operation Christmas Child. Loads of people want to do Operation Christmas Child, but they don't know about it. Mm. Um, Why do you think that is, Adam? Is it, is, is it, has there been a problem in the past where it's not been marketed yeah, um, enough so that people do get to know about it? Because yeah. it, this time of year, of course, we're inundated yes. with charities. I think that's, that's the problem. It gets swamped by all of the, um, the other charities. Mm -hmm. um, and also, it's a timing thing. A lot of people know about it. So if I go to the supermarket with my, um, this particular box and yes. I'm filling it, because my yes. daughter, every few weeks, we have to do a box because she just loves filling them. Yes. And people will come up to us going, oh, wow, I didn't realize it was shoebox time mm -hmm. already. So most people, it's, they know about it, but they don't know when. Perhaps ne necessarily understand the timings of exactly. it. Exactly. Because they have to be in, I assume, within a certain time so <laughs> they can get shipped. Yes, you know. because it's, it's all voluntary and things are done cheaply, because yes. um, th there isn't a lot of money behind it. Um, the boxes go slowly. They go by road if it's to um, parts of Eastern Europe, and they'll go by sea um, out to Africa and other countries. Um, Which and that takes a long time. Takes a long time, and then they've got to clear through customs. Um, they've then got to be given to the distribution teams, who then take them to some very remote locations. And that whole process can take between three weeks mm -hmm. in Eastern Europe and maybe two or three months um, to Africa. That's a long time. It's a long time. <laughs> so you've got distribution di distribution teams across the world yes, yeah. helping you when, when the boxes go to the other side. They're the ones that do the most work, yeah. actually.
And have yeah. you, you've been to Zimbabwe, you said, Yes. Adam. How was that for you when you were delivering your boxes? It was great. I mean, it wasn't a formal distribution because normally you book on the distribution, um, you go over with the team. But my mum lives in Zimbabwe. <laughs> so I, I said to my mum, I'm coming over. Let me Perfect know when excuse. the boxes are. Yeah. <laughs> Let me know when the boxes are. Yeah. And, and we, we, we did a few plastic boxes because we thought the shoe boxes are great, but um, can we get something that's a bit more durable. Mm -hmm. So in our volunteer group, we, um, we sent over some plastic boxes that looked a bit like this. Yes. We just decorated them with various stickers. And they went to Zimbabwe on one of the years, um, and they were very well received. But, but actually, uh, the cardboard one is still the main the main you know, one that, that, yeah, that people, that that people, people enjoy. Do. Yeah. And I mean, it's the, I mean, we're going to look after the break um, about how the boxes <laughs> actually work and, yeah. and, what, and what goes in them. Yes. But are you very pleased with what you've done so far? Were you pleased that you've given up your role? And you've I am. Yeah, I, I really enjoy it. it. The job satisfaction is immense because everywhere you go, um, every, you're bringing a difference one box at a time. And it doesn't matter how many people do because there's always... No. And more. Yeah, there'll okay. be an end. Yeah. Welcome back to Cuppa TV. I'm still here with Adam Contere from Operation Christmas Child, and we're now going to be looking at exactly what goes in the boxes. So, Adam, <laughs> let's have a look. First yes. of all, we have this. Tell us about ah, this. Right. Okay. So, when you find your shoe box, yes, yeah, so you or any old any, any shoe old shoe box, box, and you wrap it before you fill it because then it needs to yes. be opened. Okay. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Now that's the thing, isn't yes. it, with him? You can't wrap it so it's all totally wrapped to be closed right. because it has to be opened. Why does it, it need it, to be kept open? It's open for two reasons. So it can be checked at the depot to make sure there's nothing hazardous um, and then checked in the countries they go to to make sure there's nothing restricted. By customs. Yeah, by like customs. That. So it just makes it easy. Now you've also got this, yes. Adam, which I'm going to, you've you told me I've got to do, so I'm going to give that. So this is a, it's <laughs> one that you can get online? Yeah, it's a flat pack shoe box. It's just been introduced recently and um, they're, they're readily available at certain places. So some shoe zones will have them. They also act as drop-off points at shoe right. zones. Uh, the entertainer store, uh, toy store is also a drop-off point. Um, and these will be available on Big Centre TV reception as well. Wonderful. They're a bit of a trial. They're, they've been going a few years, and each year more and more are produced. Right. Um, so individually, you can get them from certain places for free. Um, and then some organisation buy them on the web in packs of 50 or 100. Wonderful. Um, so it's whether you want to... Yeah. Wow, well, I'm impressed. How That's easy is that? Fast, <laughs> so again, and of course this one yeah. you don't need to wrap. You no, because um, it's all you can put done all for you. And on the leaflets that accompany the boxes, you have the boy-girl sticker. And you can just tick the age group... Um, and whether it's a boy yes. or a girl. Now, let's have a look at that because yes. that's important, isn't it? So the, the boxes, you have a boy or a girl yep. and you have age ranges, don't exactly. you? So you would yep. mark, so you would make your box yes, either put like all the this gifts in it. or we'll go through the gifts in just a second. Yep. So on the top then, oh, ah, look, it's, all gone, it's all gone away now, that's there it. You so you would take one of these stickers Yes. And then you've got, will you tell us, and what have yeah. you got, what are the age ranges? So you literally just tick off, um, you've got 2 to 4, 5 to 9 and 10 to 14, Right. boy and girl. And so you just tick the one that your box is for, um, and then that, when they do the distribution, that then can go to that uh, age group. So you just need to put that on top of the box, do yeah. you? Yeah, um, you just cut it out, it's got like a adhesive, you either lick it or mm -hmm. moisten it, and then just stick it on there yeah. where it says put your label. That's right, And then Very they simple. know. Now, there's a donation required, isn't there, Adam, for yes, the boxes? Yes, um, the boxes have to get to the children, and so what we recommend is a £3 donation to uh, just pay the, the, the transport. Tra transport. And it's funny, right. the donation's always been roughly the cost of a coffee or a beer. So, you know, coffee's yes. about three quid, a beer's three quid, so, so what do roughly people one of those. Yes. <laughs> so what do people do, yeah. Adam? Do they put it in, in the box or, yeah, um, or this they do it online? Yeah, this that accompanies the box. You can either do it online mm -hmm. and you get a barcode that you can then track your box so you'll know where it went. <laughs> or great. you just drop it in one of these leaflets, which I... Uh, just there. in there. I'm all thumbs, aren't I? No, there you go. that's fine. Put them in there. And, and that then put that in the box. goes in the box with the gifts, sort of like that. And then at the depot... That money that gets pays taken for that out. box. Wonderful, yeah. excellent. So, I mean, that is such a, so. These are available now, are they, for this year? Yes, they're available this year. Um, selected shoe zone outlets mm. and on reception at Big Centre TV. We'll Wonderful. keep trying to get as many in as we can. And absolutely. And again, if anybody yeah. wants to come in, they can come they into can Big Centre TV and collect one here. Yes. Wonderful. So let's ah. have a look now and see what actually goes in the box. Right. This is the good. Take bit. us through. Yes. So it's not about um, designer brands. A lot of the children will be grateful for any brand. So 
I just say you go for value, yes. you know, value products. There's a lot of them out there and they're very cost effective. Um, so here we go. So let's empty. The categories, what have we got? I've got them all written down on the leaflet. Oh. So the well, first so category, I'll, do, I'll empty if you, you like. You empty it and I'll you, go through it. That's, that makes it easier. <laughs> so we've got toothpaste. Now again, yeah. is that important? So that's in the hygiene category. So we have toothpaste, mm -hmm. toothbrushes, Perfect. and something like soaps. Yes. I put four in there, just in case. Maybe <laughs> you can just put one. Now again, <laughs> Yeah. This is because the, ch the children presumably wouldn't have any of the toothpaste, no. a tooth toothbrush, or just soap just to just no. to cleanse themselves. That's the thing. So um, th that's why I put in a, a multi pack there. Uh, that's a single one. Yes. <laughs> and a face cloth. Yes. So that's your that's your hygiene category sorted out. Mm. Toothpaste, soap, uh, toothbrush face cloth. Wonderful. That's your hygiene category. So another category is education. So always pens and papers and pads come in handy so that's an inexpensive sort of notepad and again in many countries mm. Adam they don't have for the schools they don't have pen or paper and in fact they have no. to bring they have to bring their own their own yes. which of course they ha they haven't got because they can't afford yes so really by giving that in the box that's you it's a double-edged sword really isn't it it's yeah, you're wonderful because you're helping them as a present exactly. but also with their education exactly so we say put put in some pens like that for example mm -hmm. a few pens and then some fun I yes. like it colourful it's yes. nice to have a colourful shoe box that matches my table there you go look at that it all, all fits in perfectly <laughs> absolutely um, so that's the um, school there. supplies we've yes. got some more in there this is a bit of a double one this one yes and then um, toys so mm. something like a ball that's always good fun that again that, that would be good because they can share and, yeah, and play exactly and again it's just a, such a simple thing they're so it? simple uh, a ball teddy bear yo-yo um, something like balloons can be good fun just to decorate where where they are yeah um, and, and so that's it. and then there's a there's a category called so we've done toys mm. hygiene and school supplies the fourth category is other items so that will be things like hats scarves gloves sunglasses hair accessories mm. um, you'll be amazed at how um, girls appreciate hair bands, um, yes. hair clips, Alice bands, yes. all those sort of things. Um, yes. And then the final thing is sweets. Um, somehow my sweets. sweets have disappeared. Oh, here they are. They, uh, sweets, have a, sweets have a knack of doing that. Adam. Yeah, there's some sweets. It's um, probably the guys here. <laughs> I'm watching those. <laughs> the, the hard sweets are, are really a, a great so idea. Any Lollies, kind of hard, hard sweets. Sweet. We say avoid chocolate, not not because it melts, but a lot of countries don't allow dairy. Um, going right. back historically, they don't like right. dairy, and because chocolate is yes dairy, yeah. most of the time it can cause a problem in some countries. Fine. So and so yeah. hard boiled sweets are perfectly acceptable. Yes. And then when you pack it all together, yeah. you just obviously pack it as tidily as you can. Yeah, get it in. And there. with ha you mentioned hats and scarves, is yes. that important because obviously some of the countries that the boxes go to are really quite cold that's in right. the winter. Yeah, exactly, and I think that's so where... It's giving them a um, really you, a choice. A choice, yes. I haven't got an example of that. Oh, that's because okay. somehow that Don't is in worry. another box. That's okay, <laughs> because we, we know what we... You know, and these sorts of things. And they, again, would, they, would the child have ever seen anything like this? Do you know, I don't think they've seen many things at all because they find uses for things that you wouldn't expect, like like using the wrapping paper so as a poster. Once, yes, you know, you, so you once they've that. even emptied out the box, yeah, they'll keep the box. The children, as we've seen yeah. on the video, the children's actually just love the box. They love the box, they? and they'll put some of their other possessions in there. And the sharing is what amazes me. Mm. They have so little, yet they'll share. If a child um, say there aren't enough boxes to go around, and say a girl gets three hairbands, she'll give away two of them, and I, I that's amazing. So, and I mean, people are not to be worried, Adam, would you say, about, you know, it, because if it's a particular age range, yeah. um, because these children are, have never seen no, probably half, still it, so it doesn't matter, yeah. it, it, things that are going to give them joy, if That's you think it. it's a good idea, right. is that what you would say to people, yes. then put it in Just the box? Just put it in the box, we have a policy called respecting the gift, mm. and it's amazing the number of times a box arrives, it has something in it, like a, you know, a pair of gloves or a, a pair of sunglasses, and it's exactly what that child wanted. And that's down to respecting the gift. Um, at the sorting centres, they only take things out that are hazardous, and that's what's encouraged. Leave the gift as it is, and when it arrives, it goes to the child yes. and they get... And there's yeah. things that you can't include. Would that be liquid and things like yeah, that? Yeah, liquids so are generally excluded. Um, and chocolate, we've said. Yeah, chocolate, and sharp items. So um, scissors, knives um, are are not a good idea mm. um, and also any war related toys because mm. these boxes can potentially be going to areas where there is quite a lot of war related tension and stress and distress um, so we stay away from that area just in case yeah. and as as a 
um, an operation. Yeah. Is there a sort of an age range that doesn't get as many boxes, say, as, yeah, as perhaps um, a younger age mm, range, or, or is the younger <laughs> not as? You it's going to change now. Yes. Yeah, so, so yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so um, what, yeah, most what's the most people, popular? They always do the young, the young category. Which would be two to four. Two to four and five to nine girls become very popular. The ones that, that are the least are the 10 to 14 girls and the most, the, the one with the least of is 10 to 14 boys. boys. For some reason, they don't get as many mm. boxes made. Yeah. Maybe just people think can't think maybe of what to put in. But yeah. what would you think would be a good thing to put in for a, for a 10 to 14 boy? Yeah, um, just simple things. Uh, again, the soap, toothpaste, mm. colouring, all that's the same. Sweets are the Cats, same. That's right. Uh, but then more, yeah, more like a, you could put a cap, mm -hmm. like a baseball yes. cap. Um, so or like a harmonica? Yeah, that musical instrument. Yeah, that would fit in there. Yeah. Being musical. It's <laughs> amazing what, what yes. kids will, um, will play with. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Actually, would a recorder fit in there? It the probably little one. would, yeah, a little, a little recorder. Is it a yeah, but that would be good. So again, it seems like that for a, a <laughs> yeah. slinky, maybe a slinky yeah, or something are cool. like that. Yeah, yeah, slinkies. Um, you know, so again, it's just really to, just you say, don't worry so much about, you know, the most expensive yeah, car, no, no. you know, just toy or something. Just but something that's obviously safe. Safe and just just get it done. They don't. Um, these kids have got so little, mm. um, and there is. If you imagine a, a line of children on a distribution, mm. there's always never enough boxes for the whole world, effectively. So mm. that's why I say just just do a box, um, keep it simple, and a child out there will will get that message that someone actually cares. Mm. And it's that so simple. Has it changed your life, Adam? Yeah, yeah. I mean, you see that the children getting them. Um, they, uh, you can put a photograph of your family so that they can see... Maybe a Christmas card? Yeah, a Christmas mm -hmm. card. I mean, I put in boxes I do, I put a few blank Christmas cards in there. So that, And I always put a... I, I do it the opposite way around. So um, I'll put a, more girl Christmas cards in the boy boxes. Cause I've got this this thought that they're going to be giving it out to their girlfriend. Yes, I yes. I don't know if it's just going, uh, imagining too yeah, much. But no. I think if you've got the blank cards as well, they can give they them can, out to each they other. Can, they can the give Christmas. them out. Yeah. And, and in your experience, they do get, because often with charities, there's been an, you know, a lot yeah, of press yeah. this year about charities and where the money goes, where well, everything's giving. Yes. They do go exactly to They do. The and this is the strength of Operation Christmas Child. Uh, a lot of charities that are faith-based, um, come under some criticisms but the great thing about um, this being a Christian charity is we have a church network that we can tap into for distribution and in Africa particularly the church networks are probably the most reliable way of mm. getting uh, any form of logistics through customs and to the children that really need it because they're okay. aware of the need. Yes, exactly. Um, and yes. Then, yes. So if you'd like any more information for our viewers out there, just contact us here at Big Centre TV. Um, but for now, we're going to have to take a break. But thank you so much. Thank Adam. you. Thank you for joining us. And we'll keep in contact with you via a video diary yes, as well. We're going certainly. to do that, aren't yeah. we? So that's yeah. it. Right, we're going to take a quick break now, but come back and join me after the break. Welcome back to Cuppa TV. My next guest is singer-songwriter Nina Baker, a classically trained pianist who's wowing her fans and winning global awards. Welcome Nina to Cuppa TV. Hello. Wonderful to have you on the show. So Nina, what brought you here to, you know, to Cuppa TV? You've done so many things, haven't you? And it's just wonderful you could join us today. But where have you just, what have you been doing the last sort of few weeks? Uh, well, I've been busy on the festival circuit. Um, I've been very busy with that from the beginning of the year, and I'm currently working on some new video material too. Oh, wonderful! She's done a lot. So let's go back to the beginning, though, Nina. So how did it all start for you? You're a classically trained pianist, so presumably that's your passion. Yeah, I mean, I started learning piano from the age of 14, um, and also did a lot of musical theatre work too. Um, but it really started sort of five years ago when I started to write songs and I started to try out my material at open mic nights and oh, small yes. venues <laughs> yeah. and really sort of getting a feel for for audiences and getting experience that way um, but it's really the past sort of 18 months that everything's kicked off mm -hmm. and um, I, I've been supporting Ella Air and Foxes and Mark Morris as part of their UK tours um, I did the warm-up shows for Monty Python yeah. at the London O2. You've just done some wonderful things I mean when did you start to um, learn the piano Nina? What, uh, what age were you? I was 14 which yeah. is quite late really yeah. but um, 
but I think I was so driven with that instrument, it, it really suited me mm. that I was just determined to get through all of the grades and I would just spend hours and hours every day just on the piano and working out different chord structures as well as sort of reading music and everything. Yeah. And is it something that's always been a passion? Did you always want to play the piano? Um, not really. It no. was. It, Did you play another musical instrument before the piano? <laughs> I attempted, but yeah. <laughs> they, they just didn't suit me. You know, mm. I've always been singing. I was singing from a very young age in school choirs, and mm. and again, sort of musical theatre was something that I was always involved with from the age of about seven. Mm. Um, but the piano came a bit later. But as soon as I started to to play it, I couldn't stop. Yeah. <laughs> So were you in um, musical theatre when you were younger? Tell yes. us about that. What did you do? Um, I did a lot of shows uh, with the Norfolk Youth Music Theatre. I was I sort of grew up in, in Norfolk and I obviously live, live this way now. Mm. Um, but I got a lot of experience that way and I, mm. I sort of did a lot of stage shows with the Theatre Royal and the Madden Market Theatre. Oh, wonderful. So what did you do? Were you performing there? So not, not yeah, so it was singing and acting. Oh, wonderful. Is that something you'd like to do you know, in the future? Is that something you'd like to do? Do you know, I think n I've sort of moved on from yeah. that now, but it's certainly um, given me a foundation for, mm -hmm. for how I write. And I think, you know, often when I'm writing lyrics, I tend to put myself into a character. Although everything that I do is based on personal experience, mm -hmm. sometimes it's easier to kind of put yourself out side and sort of look in how, how audiences would react as well. They're, they'll see how mm -hmm. you'll... Um, how you react that yes. way. And did it give you confidence? Because I imagine, you know, being on the stage, live theatre, did that give you confidence as well? Yeah, I think so. You know, it's, it's, it's been something that I've grew up with from a very young age, you know, being on stage, whether that was singing or, or playing piano. So, And do you come from helps. a musical family, Nina? Do the rest of your family play any instruments or sing? Um, I think it's skipped a generation, yeah. actually. <laughs> my grandparents, both sides of my grandparents, are very musical, and they sort of introduced me to the real classics, like the jazz classics, like Frank Sinatra and Nina Simone, Ella Fitzgerald. And again, you know, those sort of jazz and blues mm. artists definitely come through in my music too, where there's like a fusion of, of pop with rock and jazz. Yes, because well, how do you describe your genre of music? Uh, classical pop. Classical pop is yeah. what you like to say. And is it something that you always play the piano? Is it something that's always going to be part of your music yes, career? Yes, definitely. And, you know, because I write the material as well, I always start to write material on the piano and then the lyrics come oh, yes, second I was going to ask that. you that. So, so you sit at the piano mm. and then, so what do you do? Tell us what, what you do. Just sit and then just have a sort of play around with some chords? And I then tend to work out the chord structures mm. and once I've got something that that I feel stands strong as um, a classical piece first and foremost I'll then start to work on the melody lines and then the lyrics will, will, will come from that mm, wonderful and then so from there so you're 14 when you started mm -hmm. so then what happened after that when did you suddenly think this is what I actually want to do this is going to be my career well, I had a lot of um, experience with the classical side of things, but after that, I started to get into more of the popular mm -hmm. style of music. And Tell us I about your classical. What did you do in the classical? In, in, classi in, 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 in the music, presumably, when you say you had a lot of experience in the classical, were you playing classical music? Yeah. Um, yeah, for so stage, it's for pianos, shows, yeah. wonderful. Absolutely, I used to do a lot of piano festivals as well, with sort of big classical numbers. Um, but I, I, I started to, to go off into the pop mm. genre when I did function work. I worked with different function bands who sort of um, specialised in pop and Motown music. Um, and I, you, get, you know, again, I think all of these different influences have definitely helped my my style. Yes, and I mean it is a very unique style and we'll be hearing your music at the end of the show but it's a, it is a very unique style and it's I always think it's so wonderful to hear somebody play the piano. Is there anybody that you aspire to? Is there anybody that you kind of see as your role model? Uh, well my ultimate hero is Lang Lang, mm -hmm. classical pianist and I had the honour of meeting him at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival this year which was just absolutely amazing wonderful. so you know as a pianist he is definitely somebody yeah. that I look up to. Do you think classical music, we're seeing a revival of that, you know, in the music industry? Um, I think so. I mean, there seems to be a lot of different genres coming yeah. through anyway. You know, country music is coming back again. Um, and I think everything tends to go full circle. Mm. But, you know, I'm hoping that sort of classical music will become more of a forefront I I in popular music. And that's something that I'm trying to 
to sort of get, get people's attention. Because lots of big artists now, they, they often use strings and you know, piano for orchestra. So it seems to be a popular sort of, if you like, backdrop for, the, for, for a voice. Is that something that you would like to do? Would you like to perform you know, with a full orchestra? Oh, that would be amazing, yes, certainly. I mean, the, the album had um, a full orchestra and full choirs on it as well. Um, and you know everything about the album was organic, which again is is quite unique nowadays. You know there was sort of real strings and and, and um, you know that that's something that I'm really passionate about. I was going about. to say was that important to you? Yeah, you it had really that. was. Yeah. And when you're playing now, um, you have a band session. Is it a session or do you use the same musicians? That I use come the same around? musicians. And, yeah. and they're from the West Midlands, aren't they? They're, yeah, they're all the West Birmingham Midlands, based. Yes. And and when you're there, how did you how did you get together? I mean, how did you? form this band? Did they come to you or did you pick them? Well I met my guitarist Mick Firth um, when I was actually at the Jam House. Mm -hmm. um, I did some of their showcase evenings there and I did, was introduced to him and mm -hmm. through through Nick uh, I met my, my drummer and my bass player James Randall and Christian Nichts and it's really from, from that point onwards that we've stayed as, as a four piece when we do a lot of live shows but you know I also do a lot of solo material too. Fantastic. And where do you do your solo materials? Do you perform solo as well? Yeah. And where, what's your, where would be your dream um, venue to play, Nina? Uh, is there a one I that you've always to, wanted to, to play? To be honest, I think ev every venue is different. Mm. And, you know, it, as an artist, it's, it's really great to perform at different venues so that you, you get a, a feel for different audience members. But, um, you know, this, this sort of palladium would be amazing. Yes, yes. Or the Royal Albert Hall, maybe. Absolutely, yes, yeah, so with full the, orchestra. With a full orchestra, yeah. I can see there. <laughs> and, when, and when you're playing, Nina, and, and writing, first of all, actually, before you're playing, when you're writing, um, what inspires you? Um, you know, personal experience really. The the music inspires me first and foremost, and mm. it's it's from working out the piano parts that I know the direction the song will go. Whether it's going to be a happy song or a, you know a sad song, um, but I don't sort of set out to write about a specific topic. It tends to sort of come to me when I'm when I'm playing. Mm. Does it just flow? Yeah. And do you think there's, um, as, a, as a young artist and a female artist, do you think there's enough um, f young female artists that are coming through the music industry at the moment? Um, I, I would say no, actually. You know, there's, th there's a lot of sort of statistics that prove that as well. And, you know, it's, it's certainly tougher in a lot of ways mm. for, for female solo artists to come through in the industry, I What do you say. think that is, Nina? Um, Got any views on that? I'm not well. It, it's a very male-dominated industry mm. all through, um, but you know maybe that's something to do with it. But there's a lot of bands that tend to come through as, as well, more so than solo artists. Yeah. That could be something to do with it. And when you're playing, I mean, you've won many awards. Um, and when you're playing, do you do you think about you know what could possibly be in the future you, when when you play a gig, small, or large? Do you think, you know, this is where I want to be and, and what's the next sort of platform for me? Do you think like that? Well, I'm always thinking about what I can do next and, you know, and how I can sort of reach out to more, more fans and, and more mm -hmm. people. That's, that's always on my mind, obviously, as an artist. That, that's, that's why you create music, mm -hmm. so that more people can yeah. hear it. Now, you had your album. When was your album? Your album was released. When was your album released? That was at the end of last, of last year. year. Yeah. And you were a single bruising. That's the single from the album, wasn't it? That was yeah. released as well. Yeah. Uh, but we're not going to see that one today. We're going to see you a live performance That's later right. on. But um, was, how was the album writing that for you? Was it everything you wanted it to be, Nina? It was a massive project. It took two years to do. Um, and as I said, I had, some, I had specific ideas of, of the direction that I wanted the album t to go in and I wanted it to have a real classical foundation um, but also sort of have the piano at the forefront and and, and have that sort of real rock and, and, and sort of jazz element to it yeah, as well. It is a real mixture, it's yeah. a, a, which is great, you know, it's, it's a great because you can't really put it in one specific genre. Yeah. Is, that, is that what you wanted? Was that your yeah, own? Yeah, really? and I think for me, I wanted to create an album that really took the listener on a journey. You know, I think often well, nowadays um, full albums aren't always released, you know, you'll get EPs or you'll get singles um, and people don't tend to listen to a full album as much now as they used to do and so I wanted to do something 
that was slightly different and would really keep people engaged throughout the whole album and take them on a journey to sort of highs and lows and, mm. and that comes through in, in, in the songs and the contents of the songs as well. Yeah. And tell us now, tell us about the recent award you've just won, which is the MOGO Award. Yes. So tell us about that. Uh, it's a MOGO Award, it stands for Music of Ginger Origin and um, it's a very recent award actually. Yes. It, um, I was given it a couple of weeks ago Fantastic. in London. Congratulations. Thank you. So tell us, how, how did you get that? I mean, what was, was you nominated? I how was nominated it for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's the first year they've, they've had a category for up and coming artists, mm -hmm. um, which was amazing. And I, it was part of a, a, a big event that takes place all over the world called Redhead Day UK, yes. um, which I was performing at in London. And I literally stepped off the stage and was called back on pretty much straight really? away um, <laughs> where they announced all of the awards and you know the other winners for this year were uh, Paloma Faith mm. and Newton Faulkner and Tori Amos so you know wow. absolutely amazing to be amongst those I was going names. to say were they there were they there at the award ceremony as well they were not there but Orla Gartland also performed mm. at the ceremony so it was lovely to meet her and but how wonderful to think you know that you to celebrate your peers and to and to celebrate really quite you know just an amazing award and how what's that done how's that made you feel I mean, has that spurred you on I think so you know it, as I said you know it's, it's great to have recognition particularly as an independent artist mm. that's you know, really all you can ask for is that's the most important thing is, is for people to get to know what you're doing and, and who you are and I think that's really important, yeah. And when the future, you know, how do you see your future? What are you going to be doing? Uh, a lot more sort of live shows, mm -hmm. um, a lot more writing, a lot more music. I'm actually writing at the moment. Oh, are you? Um, so I'm currently working on that difficult Album number two. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Is it um, is it always a difficult one because you've d you've done the first one that took you two years. Mm. Is number two? Do you, are you thinking right? I've got to make it better than number one, or how, what? Are, what's your thought process on that? Uh, well, I think you know since I, I started writing the first album, a lot has happened. You know, I've got lo a lot more experience. I've I've done a lot of live shows with some amazing artists and. You know, also I've, I've had a lot of different life experiences in that time, so that's definitely going to influence how I write. Mm. Um, but whether I release a full album or I release an EP or focus on one song first and, and release it through streaming, I'm not sure yet, no. but, um, but I'm certainly working on a lot of new material for the live show first and foremost. Yes, and what's, what would be a festival that you'd really like to perform at, Nina? Have uh, you got a favourite? I'd love to perform at Glastonbury. Yeah. I think, you know, every yeah, artist yes, does, yes. really, don't they? But that's okay. Yeah, but, um, yeah. but you know, there, there's some amazing mm. festivals all over the UK now. So next year, will you be taking, you know, yourself on the road and be gigging a lot more? Absolutely, can we, can we yeah. Expect to we'll see be you? hitting the road hard next year um, and looking forward to doing a, a sort of tour of Europe as well next year. So we're currently sort of working on plans mm. for that now. And is it, and is it, has your career so far because you're only young and you, you know you really have you've won so many awards and, and many congratulations for that Thank the one you've you just won um is it is it all that you expected it to be nina um it is but it's very hard work yes. you know it, it's it's <laughs> um it's, it's, it's very truthful of you it's Every not all glamour says as so, everyone yeah. thinks you know that i spend a lot of time on the road mm -hmm. um and you know it, it's, it's exhausting but you know you, yeah. you do it because you love it mm. and as an artist that that's that's why you do it so um and now you have more experience and you're gaining you know new ground new fans is there a sort of a particular genre of music where you'd like to take your music or you're quite happy with where you are at the moment um i think you know i think our, the, the 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 new material will definitely have a slightly different sound but it will always be a, a Nina Baker sound. You know, there's always going to be piano at the forefront, and that's mm. the key thing that will always remain the same. And for me as well, making sure that you know there there are sort of organic instruments and that's very and important. That's to you, very isn't important it? to me. Yeah. yeah. So it's all going to be like that. So we're going to play out the show with one of your uh, live videos. So tell us about that. Where were you? Uh, this was actually at Godiva Festival mm -hmm. uh, last year which was an amazing festival. I was on um, the main stage and, uh, and there was Horace Panther also performing um, and the, the Ordinary, bo Ordinary Boys. Wonderful. Um, but there were some amazing artists for that year and it was just a fantastic festival. Excellent. Well, it's been a pleasure to meet you, Nina. Thank you so much. So we're going to play out with your video, but come back and see me again very soon. Thank you. Thank you. Do. So that's it for today's show. I'd like to thank Nina and Adam for joining me today. And if you'd like to get
get in touch with us here, you can join us on Facebook or Twitter at Big Centre TV. Thank you for watching and come back and join me very soon. Bye bye. Nothing's different Trying hard to convince